Hello, Jody. How are you? Can you hear me all right? You can't hear me? Oh no. Can you hear me, Jody? Oh, you can't hear me. Okay, good. Because I can't change my microphone right now. I would have to, like, probably go out and then come back in. But I'm glad you can hear me. Yay! <laughs> I'm excited. I think this is going to be a wonderful demo. demo. <laughs> well, I'm excited to get started. <laughs> but I'll wait a couple more, I'm sure. Hopefully more people will show up. Um, while we are waiting, I'll show some, I'll show kind of what I was working on. So this is the demo I'm going to do. But then, of course, I couldn't leave well enough alone. So I had to come up with a couple more different ones. Um, this one, I, I put just white water, or I just put clean water on. And I just kind of brushed it where I felt like it. Then I sprinkled brush o and then I added clean water or a dry brush and I I just kind of made it happen and I'm really excited for this one too. This one turned out really cool and I think this is the one I put a little bit of copper on at the bottom and I think that copper just adds a lot of characteristic to the painting. Um, the next one I did, the next two actually were done with a crayon, with a white crayon. And so what I did was I took my, I took a, my kids' white Crayola that they never use, and I drew, before I did anything on white paper, you could kind of see where the, where the wax is, and I, I drew, I drew on the paper, and then so it acted as a resist, which I know a lot of people have done that, so that's not a new thing, but... Um, I had fun, just something different. And this was the same thing, but I just didn't have as many lines. And so I don't know which one I like better. I almost like this one with a little bit more of the white lines. Um, but anyways, <laughs> we'll see. I might get to the white, this white one. We'll see, but I'm excited to see how it goes. Things are going well with you, Jody. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to get started because we're probably going to put this on YouTube and I don't want to um, have this to be much of a problem. I am waiting on one more person to show up. And I don't know if it'll actually tell me who is here. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Um, hey, Lynn. I'm so happy to see you guys. Hey, Jen. I was just um, sharing how other ways I've painted the seascape. And this one I actually used, um, is it called seafoam? Sea green, sea green. I really like that one. That one's really fun. Um, anyways, uh, let me get started. So this one does not use a white crayon. The other, 
two of the three other ones that I showed you did. Um, I painted this almost, oh my gosh, it was probably about two months ago. It was late, like mid-spring, and um, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I used a lot of turquoise. I used some ultramarine. And then down here, I used the sandstone and the dark brown. So if you're going to paint along with me, you're going to want uh, you're going to want sandstone for the beach and I start that first and then I put I go straight into the brown and then at the and then I put a sprinkle a little bit of copper sprinkle it on if you don't have that I don't think it makes much of a difference you can you know, be able to see a little bit of the shimmer maybe but it just gives it a neat texture um, but the dark brown also gives a nice texture um, and then for here, you can see specks of ultramarine, and then I used a lot of turquoise, um, and then this guy is a little bit of turquoise too. So, um, let's get started. I have a, like a 9 by 12 sheet of paper, and I'm hoping my camera doesn't keep, um, sometimes it likes to, uh, I try to autofocus when I tell it not to, and I, I haven't quite figured out how to change that. I did mention a round brush. I'm also going to use a flat brush for down here. And let me just, I'm going to kind of run through you through how I compose this. Each time I do this painting, it never turns out the same way. So I cannot guarantee you that we're going to see all of this, but I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. Um, so what I do is if you are like, if you need a pencil drawing, I'll pencil, I'll, I'll lightly pencil it in. But what I did was I just, I kind of had this line for the beach. Now I'm just probably going to go over, but I'm okay with that. And then I had this, like, I want a lot of white space. And then that's my sandy area. And then I'm going to go on. And this just kind of gives me where I want my darks to be. And then my horizon line is about up there. So you can kind of see my pencil lines. Normally I don't put in my pencil lines, but if you are the type of artist where you feel like I need pencil lines, there's that's where my mind is going. That's where my composition is. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so I am gonna use a flat brush. This is a one inch flat brush and I'm going to be pretty liberal with my water. My my paper gets pretty wet. Um, and I'm okay with that. Okay. And I'm actually going to come up a, a little bit more. Now when I'm, I'm going to start with sandstone. That's my lightest uh, brownish uh, you know, yellow color, sandy color. And I remember, I, I'm trying to not get all the way up here because this is where I want some of my water to be. So if you're, but we'll see, I might, <laughs> it might not turn out that way. Um, I also like to have a spray brush handy. So if you have a spray or a spray bottle, not brush bottle. I use the Tim Holtz Distress Sprayer, I, you can get like lots of different varieties of um, water droplets. And I spray about probably six or, I don't know, six inches from the paper. So you probably can't see it, but you can see the brush reacting when I spray it. And that is what I'm looking for. I want this to look like, um, this will dry a little bit and it'll look hopefully like this inside and I might even add a little bit more darks to it but for now I'm happy with that I'm going to take a I, this is just a washcloth that I use to dab up when I don't want it to go too far okay I'm really liking that and now before I go any further I'm going to add some more copper sprinkle it copper and I will probably be coming back to add some more darks down here, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. And I am going to 
like I said, this is a very intuitive practice, so take your time practicing how to make it. And then a lot of times what I like to do is if I'm just in my studio, I will put on some beach music or music that makes me feel like I'm at a beach. And I'm just kind of adding, I don't want a whole lot of texture at the very, very top of where the water kind of <laughs> um, comes up to the, to the dry sand. I want that texture. But what I'll do is I'll just mentally be at a beach when I'm painting. Even though I'm in my studio, I'm mentally at the beach painting. All right, so here comes the fun part. I am, I always like to blow my paper, so if there are any brush oak crystals up here, um, hopefully they've gone away. And I'm just gonna spray this. I'm gonna sprinkle, when I say sprinkle, I mean lightly sprinkle this area. Um, and I'm really high up like this. I'm using ultramarine and I'm, I'm topping way high and I think my ultramarine is getting a little bit clumpy. <laughs> but this just kind of, if you're worried about the blank page, this will um, hopefully get you to just dive right on in. We don't even mess around. All right, so then I'm gonna take my spray bottle and I'm gonna spray again because I wanna see where all my pigment went. And I'm okay if I get up in the sky because the sky is also going to get it, is going to be blue, but I would like it to be mostly white. All right, now I'm just going to dap up most of the water that I just sprayed because I just wanted to activate the brush oak. That's all I wanted to do. This, I'm doing this because I don't want a stark, stark white. I would like, because most waves are not, the cap of the waves are not white. It's, there's a little bit of color to it. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're creating this under painting for that. Okay. I'm liking this. I see a little bit more water up here, but so far I'm liking this. So the, it's wet. If I were to start just sprinkling it on, it's going to go everywhere. So I'm going to be very, very careful. And I know I want, th this looks pretty good. I'm going to add, I'm going to add some brush over where my pencil line is. And then this is where kind of the magic comes in. Um, and you can't really see where the pigment went, but I sprinkled right around here. And so I'm going to get it started. I'm not using my brush as like a line to, I'm letting the gravity do a lot of it. And I'm going to come. I'm going to take a clean brush and I'm just going to move right around here and then I'm going to add a little bit more. This is a very intuitive process. I can't always explain, well, you need, you just want to, you're, you're, you're painting with water so it's really pretty easy, but if you feel like you need more um, pigment, just add it and I like to add to the top of this and then let it blow down and that's what I'm doing sometimes and I don't have this paper to a board or anything um, you could I have I have I'm using 140 pound paper uh, from Canson so it's gonna take a beating and um, this is the one paper that has been my staple for at least a year and a half now. So I feel pretty confident in this paper. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back in this way and I'm gonna make that bead of water on the line that I created. And I'm again, I'm gonna use ultramarine right here and I'm hopeful. There we go. And I don't ever, if I feel like doing something with my painting, even though I didn't do it in this one, I'm going to. And right now I feel like it needs a little bit of water splatter. So I just take clean water and I just use my finger to, 
or my hand, and I flake water like that. And I, I like that. Now we're gonna go back in with turquoise, so I'm not feeling like I have to make this perfect by any means. Again, we're making this <laughs> very loose, and I think this is just gonna go right up into this one. Now, if I felt like it, I could have opened up the cap and used a dry brush, but too often I want to use my dry brush as my wet brush and then I would ruin my brush shows and so I just use it in the tub because I am not the most organized person and I would totally ruin my brush shows, but you can kind of see how this is coming along. I'm definitely taking my time with this. I'm enjoying the process, you guys, and if you have questions, I would love to hear them because I know not everyone paints this way, and this might be a very <laughs> um, different way of painting a seascape, and that's okay. Me, I have my way, and I honestly don't know too many people that paint like this, but um, if you read, and I have the book with me I'll try and find it but Jean Haynes paint yourself calm has a wonderful example on how she paints water and this I, I read her book I've done her exercises I didn't love how she explained it and maybe I just didn't get it um, quite right but I used that I used her idea with this so if that's where this is this idea is stemming from Okay, so now this is looking really cool. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit of water down here, pull this pigment down. And now I think I'm ready for my turquoise. I, I, I preserved my whites pretty well, I think. I'm going to add a little bit more here. I don't necessarily want like chunks of white right I want it to look water but I think I'm ready to add my turquoise except for I probably need to add my horizon line I like having an underpainting I also um, when I painted this I didn't have sea green and I do now, and it's becoming my new favorite, blue-green. I don't know, have anyone else had um, a sea green? It's really pretty. It's from, it's, it's that color right there, if you can see the difference. If you do have sea green, I'd love to know what you use with it, because uh, it is becoming my new favorite. Debbie, I'm glad you like cans and paper too. It's a good alternative to arches, I think. It's not gonna um, take the place of arches. I still have a you know special <laughs> place in my heart for arches, but I think brusho works. I'm sorry, a little bit better on cans and paper, um, cold press paper than on arches. I don't know. I know arches is meant for oh pigment, and I. I I would be surprised if this is actual pigment. I'm thinking that brusho is more dye, and maybe I'm wrong, but it, it, when I paint with liquid dye, it has the same properties as that. And I'm, so I'd be curious to know if um, Colorcraft has actually said it's a dye or if it's an actual pigment. Uh, not that it really matters, but um, it, it can if you're <laughs> wanting to, you know, do something. Anyways, I'm playing too much. Let me get back to, um, I have my whites preserved. I'm gonna keep my whites preserved. I'm not messing with my whites. I like this. And again, this painting is already looking completely different than this one, but I am gonna add the turquoise and that turquoise really adds to the, to the picture. Um, but I see something here that I'm just not loving and it's this line. I can still see this line. So I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to add some more sandstone and I put a lot of water down so I'm hoping that it will just blend 
with brusho, my main objective when I am painting with brusho is not to use it like watercolor. I want the texture. If I wanted, um, if I wanted a, a like a flat wash, I would use my watercolor. But I don't. I want a. I want a textured look. And that's why I've spent so much time on this because now the turquoise is going to make, is just going to hopefully be a fast process. And I'm just sprinkling water because I don't want to use my brush to m mess with the sand. I, I really want it to just be a natural thing. But I can move my paper around, up and around. I'll move it this way. But you can see that beautiful texture that I'm getting with the sand just from the... And I don't know about you, but I have an easel, like a tabletop easel that I can move horizontal or um, I, can, I can almost, I can really tilt my paper any way I want and I really like that. All right, I'm gonna dab this up a little bit. I don't necessarily want puddles forming you could, but oh my gosh, look at that texture already. That's what I was looking for. But I wanted to get the blue down first so I had more to go on because it is an intuitive process, practice. Let's go here. Uh, I can't open my call. No. Um, so, anyways, all right, we're on to the turquoise. Let me. <laughs> I'm gonna just add a little bit of water right here. If you guys have questions, again, I would love to ask. I would love to answer them. How often have you guys painted a beach scene? <laughs> no, no one's gonna answer me. That's okay. And so I really just want this blue to just mingle with the ultramarine blue. <laughs> and my horizon line is not straight. Sometimes if I am able to, I like to, okay, that's not good. And I'm going to, now I'm just adding a lot of water and I'm letting the water, the water's gonna go where their water where water is and I feel like I just got what I don't want to have happen <laughs> I don't mind up here um, is to wash away with all the ultramarine because I spend a lot of time on this ultramarine and it's really pretty and I don't want to um, just let that go but I do want to be able to let it just flow so I'm using the flow of where I had water on the page and I'm just letting it really do its thing. I'm letting it, I'm not necessarily controlling it. This is too much. I'm just dabbing it up a little bit. I'm really liking this. And now this is dried a little more than I would like, so I'm going to yeah, very nice, okay, and I think at this point, at this point, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to let it, I'm just going to, uh, I'm, I'm looking at my hard edges here and here, and I'm looking at my, um, loose edges or my hidden edges and I'm thinking where do I want the waves to feel I want it to look more fluid than it already is so I'm going to come up here I'm just going to add water and I know that if I'm fast enough I can get it almost back to white I see that I don't necessarily want those hard 
like if you look in here I don't have hardly any hard lines and that's what I'm going for but to be able to do that I have to work fast and I have to just what I call I call this process like the get in get out you're not you're either doing it and you're getting it done or it's gonna just sit there and it's not going to do what you want it to do I do like this I think this gives it a really nice look so I'm gonna just I'm almost glazing over it so it doesn't have this stark white look and then I can just use my towel this is a washcloth it's dry it's not damp and go over it um, and I just step it back and I'll look at it if I if I was painting just in my studio I would have it up on my easel so I'm looking not I'm looking straight at it instead of looking down but I'm happy with the way it looks um, this blue is not my favorite so I'm gonna see if I can't either make it more pronounced I think is what I'm gonna have to do and I'm gonna bring it all the way down here And then for this sky, I really like that. <laughs> it reminds me of a beach for sure. Um, for the sky, this is pretty dry. Like I'm touching it and up here is dry. So I'm gonna use my flat brush again. And because the dominant color is turquoise, I'm starting with a little bit at the corner. Now might see, that might seem kind of crazy, but I there's a method to my madness. My method is this will bead all the way down and just let it let it flow. <laughs> then then what I could do is take a clean flat brush and now I'm just letting that other this just go down and I could even move it like this I don't necessarily want it to look like we got storm clouds so I'm gonna I'm just suggesting that the sky is about as blue as the sea so a sunny day and this is where you could get a flat wash but normally with brushes I want the I want the texture, but I do really love that I can get this nice sky. And now if I don't want it to look flat, I could take my water and splatter it. So then it doesn't look completely like a flat wash, which would be a nice, it just ties the sky and this um, water together. And then I would almost dab up a little bit. I don't want to lightly very lightly and then I'm calling this piece done I think I think I would be done now you don't have to add ultramarine and turquoise you could definitely just use turquoise and get that beautiful uh, seascape this one has a little bit more light and I think what I did I'm almost sure <laughs> when I when it dried I came back with a mix I just had some ultramarine and turquoise on my palette and I took just I just painted a little bit more waves so I had my whites already preserved but like I painted right here you can see where I used another layer and painted that just to give it some extra movement and I think I did that like right here too and again it's just a very simple process so let me let that dry I'm gonna let that dry I'll show you another quick way to make a seascape and there's these are two different techniques that they are literally almost the same but they are one uses a white crayon and one uses just the paintbrush and let me let me get let me get, I'll get the white crown. You're not going to be able to see the white crown very well. Um, 
I can't even see my white crown. Where did I put it? <laughs> um, all right, we'll start with the other one. The white crown is up. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I know from observing the um, C that I'm using a, so that was a nine by 12 piece. This is a, like a close to five by seven. So a bit smaller, so I'm moving around my, okay. So I know that waves are, the white caps of the waves, um, they are like, there's more towards the front than there are to the back. So if this is my horizon line right here, I'm gonna come down here and I'm just making um, white lines. I'm not thinking about it. I'm just in my mind, I'm thinking, okay. And then I'm gonna use the side of my crayon to get that surf. And I can sometimes, I can move the paper and see if I have enough white on. And I see that I probably need a little more up here. Um, but you can move the paper. You're not going to be able to, yeah, you can see see my white lines. So you can kind of tell where it's going to resist. Okay, I like that. I'm going to leave that the way it is. And again, I'm going to start with my, usually I don't like to go with my darks first, but in this case, I find it actually really helpful <laughs> I don't know maybe I'm the only one that feels that way but um, normally I go largest value to darkest value always when it comes to watercolor and I definitely do not go for this rule doing <laughs> yeah you're right Jen sorry I haven't been looking at my screen I love using um, like just water splatter to add texture for clouds for lots of things with brush um, and again I just want to get this wet I'm not again in and out when it comes to brush the more you the more you work at it the less the, it's not gonna look fresh and it's gonna look like you spent too much time on it and I am not a very patient person, so I like to not spend as much time on things. I'm really liking that. Maybe we'll have a, okay. Yep, and I'm gonna let that kind of set. Now I can go back in, and since I already have my lines done, I'm looking where my lines are so I can, okay. There's my horizon line. And this is a much faster way to do this kind of same thing. The only thing is, is you don't have as much control. I felt like the first demo I did, I had more control over. And this time I'm gonna, I will introduce sea green because I just, I, I think it's beautiful. And I think it works very well with ultramarine. We'll see, I might have added too much sea green. We're all about playing here, so. And again, I'm using my magnificent, look at that blue, look at that sea green. I always think, oh my gosh, what did I just do? The sea green is not, <laughs> not what I was hoping for. And I'm taking my big brush and I'm just adding lots and lots of water to the paper. I haven't quite figured out what I'm doing with the brown. I didn't leave enough white or dry paper. So now I'm getting this muddy mess, which is not what I was hoping for. But brush holes are pretty um, forgiving. We're just gonna add that. We'll go on back to the sky and I'll add
Does anyone else paint with a towel in their um, non-dominant hand for all the oopses that you do? Because I do. <laughs> okay, I think you got kind of the idea. You can see the resist. Um, I'm going to add turquoise to kind of counteract the, the green. I like the green. I feel like it needs to be toned down with turquoise. And I'm quite all right with that. And I think then you'll see the big difference in the resist. Take my round brush. Uh, while I'm painting, I haven't told you guys that um, if you are, if you play with Brusho all the time, you should be joining our Brusho team. We are wanting to bring a new fresh look to the Brush of Fun group. It's a fun way to get to know other artists. It's also a fun way to show your uh, design skills or how you would paint. How would you paint this? Would you paint it like I do? Would you do something completely different? Maybe you have a stencil that you love and you would use a stencil for this seascape. I don't know, but um, we, want to, we want to hear from you. We want uh, to have you be part of the group a bit more so if you feel like now's your chance to share some of your talents with maybe new beginners or um, there's always members that have been here for a while but hasn't picked up brusho for a bit uh, share the love of brusho with us by joining our team I think um, it's definitely opened my eyes and has made me um, be, it just has brought a lot of fun to my creative career and I'm grateful to be part of this and so anyways I'm just here to share the love of Russia so if you are like me and you just want to share your love with Russia you don't have to have a video um, set up like I do um, I'm I'm grateful that I have this um, but you don't have to you can totally just be you know, what we're looking for is for people to just share their creativity and and their know-how anyways it's it's a lot of fun i have really enjoyed working with jan and she's the she's the like the group monitor moderator of it okay i really like that it's a it doesn't give you as much control as the first one but it does help um it does give you that neat look um of of a seascape and it, once it dries, it looks a little bit nicer. Now, with this, what I could do, and what I think I might do, is there's this really pretty color called um, Iridescent Violet. And I really, really like this. I'm going to sprinkle very lightly. A little bit goes a very long way. Um, that's going to give it some texture. It's also going to make the water shiny. <laughs> Um, and I really, I just enjoy it. It's, I don't, I know it's made with mica, um, but I, I really don't know much more other than that. It's made with mica, and to, to make sure it doesn't fall off the page, you have to make sure that there's water on the page. So that's why it was still wet. I thought, oh, just sprinkle it a little bit with iridescent violet. It's really pretty. Um, instead of copper, I figured I would do the water, but but there you go and i think i would leave the sky simple if i wanted to maybe i would i'll come back and do the sky i want to let it dry okay so this is about done you can tell it's it's dry i can i can mess with it now <laughs> i can play with it just a little bit more now what i don't want to do is overwork this and i have a tendency to overwork okay here's my palette it's a pie plate pie pan that I use all the time and I'll put brush oil, just a little bit of brush oil right here and it's going to just add so here's my ultramarine and then I'm going to do turquoise and I'm hoping that maybe it will they will mingle a little bit I don't necessarily want them to mingle a lot 
here's my turquoise. And then I have my ultramarine right here. All right. So now I get to decide where do I want my whites to pop. And right here, I don't mind right here, but I feel like I could just add a little bit more. And it'll just add to the sea. Like it'll just add to the water. I don't want to. My goal here is to not make it look like I painted it in. I want it to look like water, just, it just happened. So that means a lot of soft edges and a lot of, um, I, I call it play. Some people might call it um, obsessiveness. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Maybe you guys know what I'm talking about, but right here, like it just adds a little bit more motion, and that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for. And then if I see a brush stroke, I'm just gonna add to it. Why not, right? And then clean brush. I'm just gonna smooth that edge off a bit, just so. It doesn't look like I painted it in. I'm just adding the, I'm really what I'm doing is adding value to what I, and contrast. And when you think of it in that terms, it doesn't, um, it doesn't seem so hard. Because right before, like the waves crash, you have that beautiful deep color. And so that's kind of, what my thought process is. And again, I don't want to go all the way to the end of the, to the end because your eye wants to see variations of color. Got some ultramarine that I think would act, would be really pretty right here. Kind of in with glazing on top of the turquoise. And we'll do the same right here. And I need just a little bit more ultramarine. I would love to do a sunset um, water, like water on a sunset. I think that would look really pretty. I am gonna go off the edge of that, but I'm gonna hide that edge. And so, uh, yeah, a little bit of this will go a long way. I really love how this looks, so I don't necessarily want to, like, I just want a faint line. Right across, and then I'm going to, again, soften that edge so you can barely tell what I did. Now, if I want to go back in, I can add some bigger brush strokes right here and say, yeah, the sea is not as calm as it could have been there. I like that. Exactly. You can kind of see exactly how this is taking shape. Now I could spend hours and hours adding little lines. Um, I'm not usually that kind of person, so I usually get in and get out, but I do see like right in here, I want to, I, I really want to get this edge cleaned up a little bit. And I would love to know if you guys do brush work, I'd love to know where you learned how to handle your brush for line work like this is I I like doing line work. It's also maybe a little tedious at times but the what, the best book is um the spirit of the brush that has helped me learn so much on how to use my like my my brush to use line work and in intuitive pieces like this um i am not loving this area right here and since i'm doing a demo and since i feel like i want to make it the best that i can i'm going to add a little bit of brown and do what I did here, but on the sand. 
again I love the texture on this end so I don't want to ruin that but I think it needs something to just say here's this here's the just like that you just have to I don't know <laughs> go by faith and and say it's gonna work because it's my painting and I get to choose what I want to do with it um, and then I think I'll soften that edge I don't mind that hard edge because maybe it's And I'm afraid that if I do much more, it's going to be totally overworked. So I am putting my paintbrush down and I am walking away from this, so to speak. Um, and I really like that. I think that added to the seascape. I don't think adding this little bit really just makes me happy. It needed something more. I got lucky on this one um, only because I left this completely white and the brown looks like it just washed away with the ocean. Um, that was a happy accident. I couldn't, I, I could probably try a hundred different ways and never get it to look exactly like this. So my next best thing is to um, make it work with my brush strokes and that's, that's how I did that. So um, a lot of it is playing, a lot of it is just learning how to use your brushos yeah <laughs> it's 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 fun um oh my gosh i've been talking for 45 minutes you guys um there's the one that i just did with the white crayon and it's pretty dry i don't know can you see the sparkles kind of right up here is a whole bunch of sparkles i think you can you probably can't see it glisten in the camera light but it's there and it's really pretty um so now if I wanted to, to do this guy, I would do the same thing that I did on the other painting, but since it's dry and act brush shows activate when you water, when you put water on it again. So, um, and I already have some paint on my palette, so I'm just going to add, um, take this, make that bead down like I did before. And then I'll just add a little bit of water splatter to the sky. It won't, it, it'll dry more atmospheric that way. And then I'm calling that one done as well. So let me move my palette out of the way. Here are the two main demos that I chose to do with you guys. I hope this helps. Um, I'm going to read your questions real quick or your comments just in case I forgot something. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the brush show team is going to be really fun, Jan. I'm hoping to see a lot of, there's so many good talented artists that I'm always blown away with when I, on the group. So I'm hoping good things come from, from there time and effort um <laughs> you know the iridescent violet comes in the pack of six of the sprinklets and i think it was like 32 dollars or so i got mine on dick blick and it was a it was a splurge but oh my gosh i use iridescent violet a lot i think you definitely will want it <laughs> Oh, thank you. I like I like it in my water too. I have a I have a brusho vibrant greeting card brusho class on the artist fine art cafe academy, and and I oftentimes will make these and turn them into cards and then stamp like I'll cut this to like a five and a half by um, four and a quarter. So it would probably go long ways. And then I would stamp a sentiment, like maybe right there. 
And so I'm always trying to find ways to add iridescent colors uh, to my cards because it just adds that extra surprise. <laughs> oh, you know, Debbie, I feel like I'm still learning Brusho as well. It is never ending. <laughs> I don't think, in fact, I'm taking a watercolor class right now and I'm learning a lot and I thought I knew quite a bit about watercolor, but I'm always amazed at how some artists will do things differently and it was exactly what you needed <laughs> at the time. So I, I think we're all learners when it comes to watercolor because there's so many different ways to, to play with brushes and watercolor and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Canadian prices are a bit nuts. I feel that way about UK prices too. I, I don't know. I'm, yeah. But I definitely recommend Sprinkle It. The, um, vi the iridescent violet is really worth getting if you are looking to, but I don't think you can get it individually. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Jan or Jody, do you know if you can get Sprinkle It, just the iridescent violet by itself? I thought you had to get it as a kit with the other Sprinkle It's, but I could be wrong. I'll look and find out for you. <laughs> but it's World Watercolor Month, so I'm hoping that lots and lots of people will paint. And I'm hoping that this demo gave you an idea of how to paint um in in brushos in a different way i have a lot of fun painting seascapes um landscapes and brushos mm -hmm. <laughs> oh thank you thank you mary and i really appreciate that yeah i thought you could only get the sprinkle it in the package of six but it's worth it i've used every single one multiple times um, and I just poke holes in it like I would with my regular brushes. Uh, the difference is, is when you poke holes in it, and I didn't realize this, it comes with like this, I don't know, foamy pad, probably to keep it safe in shipping, but I didn't remove that pad. So like I wasn't getting hardly any brushes out of the, any of the sprinkle out of it. And now that I do... Um, I think one hole is more than enough. I think if you poke three holes, you're um, you're gonna get it in lots of places, but that's okay. <laughs> I have learned to um, control what I can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you did get copper. Good. Yeah, it, they're fun products to work with. And now that it's drying, I think you can see the iridescent even more yeah it's just fun and then over here you can see the copper um i'll try and i don't know if you can see it's right there's a whole bunch like right in here yeah you can see like i can see that one right there that's copper it's just a really fun piece it's really fun to work with and i think what I'll do with these, I want to frame this and put this in my bathroom. <laughs> I just love the ocean. Um, and I'll probably put this, maybe I'll put these side by side. They look like they could be a side by side piece. But um, anyways, I hope this works. I hope you guys give this a try. If you do, I'd love to see your work. It's always fun to see how other artists um, paint the same thing and I would truly be honored to see you guys see your artwork so share if you can <laughs> oh you're welcome Sarah I'm glad that you enjoyed this um, tutorial or this demo it's really fun and take some time think about the ocean when you're painting and put on some of your favorite summer music and just have fun <laughs> All right, I'm going to take off unless you guys have any questions. Oh, how awesome. You are lucky, Marianne, to have gotten the um, sprinkle it iridescent flash by your, uh, without getting the whole package. Good for you. 
<laughs> Thanks, Lynn. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I will I will find some more demos to work on for you guys. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, the iridescent gold would look really pretty too with the sand. Um, I the copper blends well with the dark brown and so that's why I chose copper but the iridescent gold would look really pretty if you were doing like a uh, this color is more of like daytime color but I think that iridescent gold would look really pretty with uh, maybe not the turquoise and just the ultramarine with the sandstone I think I think you would have a really good I think that would look really pretty Mm -hmm. You're very welcome. <laughs> oh, have fun at the beach, Marianne, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks, Jen, for all your help. And um, if you guys need a link to something, um, comment, and we will get those links for you. Uh, thanks so much. I really appreciate you guys watching. Happy painting. <laughs> Oh, you're very welcome, Marion.